E85, it has a higher octane rating than even premium grade gasoline and at a lower price per gallon. Sounds too good to be true, right? I'm Lake, the motor oil geek, and I survived the switch to E15 in NASCAR. So let's take a look at some test results and research into how ethanol affects motor oil and engine wear. And since regular gas contains up to 10% ethanol, and in some cases up to 15% ethanol, this data applies to everyone, especially if your engine has a carburetor. Back in 2011, NASCAR switched from leaded fuel to E15, 15% ethanol. And at Joe Gibbs Racing, we went from basically never having to rebuild carburetors to having to rebuild carburetors after every race. The reason for that was that we didn't run the same carburetor every single week. We had carburetors for specific racetracks, and because you didn't run those same tracks every single week, the carburetors would sit in storage before the next race when it was needed. And it was while the carburetor was in storage that the ethanol impacted the metals in the carburetor, which changed the performance of the carburetor, which is why we had to rebuild them after every race. And we saw the same thing with my dad's vintage go-karts. If we used E10 fuel to flush the carburetor after the race, we ended up having to rebuild the carburetor at the next race because the fuel diaphragm wouldn't work as well. So we even had to switch to non-ethanol fuel to flush these old vintage cart engines to make sure the carburetors would stay good. So why do we see these issues with ethanol and our carburetors? It's because ethanol is a type of alcohol. In fact, it's grain alcohol, which can be derived from corn which is why ethanol became really popular several years ago as a way of having a renewable fuel. Unfortunately, they found out that it actually doesn't really work in the grand scheme of things. Ethanol is still part of our fuel supply in the US. Again, as little as 10%, all the way up to 85%, depending upon what type of ethanol blended fuel you have. And it's added to our fuel as an oxygen to reduce emissions. Now, that oxygen also increases the octane of the fuel. Straight ethanol is about 100 octane, and oddly enough, when you blend it in with gasoline, it can push the octane higher. So E85 can be over 100 octane fuel. That sounds pretty great. Unfortunately, that same oxygen atom in that ethanol molecule is what causes the corrosion problems that we saw at Joe Gibbs Racing and with my dad's vintage two-cycle carburetors and pretty much everyone else's lawn mowers and weed eaters and things that have carburetors on them. Because in the ASTM D4806 fuel specification, it states some fuels corrode fuel system metals other than copper, but there are no ASTM test methods for metals other than copper. So depending upon the type and concentration of the oxygenate ethanol, oxygenated fuels can corrode fuel system metals such as zinc, magnesium, aluminum, and steel. Guess what carburetors are made out of? <laughs> ethanol is hygroscopic, which means ethanol blended fuel can absorb moisture right from the air, which is why folks with boats already know about this. Back to surviving E15 in NASCAR, we learned the hard way that ethanol blended fuels will absorb moisture from the atmosphere. The drums of fuel for the dyno were absorbing moisture from the atmosphere and causing rust issues on things like valve springs inside the engines. 
we figured that out and then moved the drums to a climate controlled area where it could not absorb atmospheric moisture anymore to fix that problem. And if all that wasn't enough for you, ethanol requires a richer air to fuel ratio than gasoline, which means you have to burn more ethanol than gasoline to go the same distance as gasoline. And higher fuel consumption means a higher fuel to oil ratio, which means a shorter oil life. Now let's jump right into that research data. Doctors Costa and Spikes studied the effects of ethanol on tribofilm formation in engine oils. They used a really cool device called an MTM Slim that allows you to see film formation. So not only can you measure oil film thickness, you can also measure how long it takes for that tribofilm to grow. And they found two interesting things. Adding ethanol to the oil reduced oil film thickness and the addition of the ethanol to the oil delayed oil film formation. So it was a double whammy adding ethanol to the oil. And that correlates with what we've seen here at Speed Diagnostics. When there's a higher level of fuel dilution, ethanol in the oil, wear is higher. Bringing down that fuel dilution brings down wear, and that matches up with this research. So what do you do about it? Personally, I'm avoiding ethanol blended fuels for anything that has a carburetor or marine applications. Fortunately, ethanol-free fuels like Reg 90 are widely available across the United States, and small engine fuels that are ethanol-free, both for four cycles and two cycles, are also available at places like Walmart, Home Depot, and Lowe's. So it's actually pretty easy to avoid ethanol blended fuels for the applications where they're really not the best choice. And if your car just really needs E85, you probably ought to test your oil. Because if you're not testing, you're trusting. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.